This is Checking In, a show where I, Kaylin Kyle, check in with familiar names and faces from around the world of sports to say hello, chit chat about this and that, and discuss the challenges of being housebound. Today, I will be checking in with defender for Tijuana, Leandro Gonzalez Perez. First off, Leandro, thank you so much for joining us on Checking In. I need to ask you, where are you and who are you quarantining with at the moment? Hi, Kelly. Yes, I am good. My family is good. This is the, the most important thing in this moment or in this period. Uh, I am in San Diego. Uh, I live here. Uh, I cross the border every day to, to training with, with Jolos. Not now, but... Mm -hmm. It is normal, I cross every day. Speaking of Cholos, I want to ask you, what was your initial reaction when the league, Liga uh, MX was cancelled? Yeah, it was, it was crazy because we never imagined that. Mm -hmm. like, we, are, we, we never be prepared for, for receive that information and when receiving WhatsApp, uh, now we are we are fixing to, to start a pre-season for the next season, uh, for the Apertura, uh, because the, the tournament here is divided into two tournaments. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now we, we have to be in, in the club on June 8th okay. to, to start the, the pre-season with all staff with security, safety, mm -hmm. uh, that things they, they try to use now how to to fight against the, the COVID and, and leave us to, to do our job. How does Liga MX compare to the MLS? So they, they made me that question here a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I see both leagues very similar. Okay. Like on the on the rhythm of the game, on how they play. The only difference I see here than in MLS is, is the contact. It's, it's mm. Because the, the most of the players here are from South America and, and are Mexicans, of course. But the Mexican has the same costumes we have in South mm -hmm. America. And this is the, the difference. I, I see in, in between both leagues. Now, someone like yourself that was very successful in America and now uh, you're in Mexico, do you think the two leagues could join forces and make almost a super league if you are saying that they're very similar? Yeah, I listen that. I listen that. Uh, for the players, it mm -hmm. could be good experience. Like, I don't know for the people. For example, yeah. if Chivas de Guadalajara plays against Kansas City, all the people has to travel to the USA, <laughs> so I I saw difficult for that way. But for the players, I, I think for for myself, uh, I think would be good, would be great, great speed. Yeah. What do you miss most about Atlanta? Now, my husband played with you whilst you were there. I was very close with your wife. We have that connection. We have kids the same age. Um, your wife is pregnant. I'm pregnant again. So yeah. we're very similar in that way. We what have a similar you, life. Yeah. yeah, we really do. We, I, we copy you a little bit. Um, but <laughs> what, what do you miss most about Atlanta and the MLS? Well, well after three years, the, the most I miss is, is the relationships I have there. Uh, I had a lot of friends. Uh, I leave friends in the team, so I I leave players like I have a good relationship, like I have a good friendship. Uh, of course, I miss the club because that club you will you yeah. you saw what's amazing, mm -hmm. the, the, the training facilities, the stadium, the people, uh, everything there was amazing. Like I miss them, but I am very happy with my decision. So mm -hmm. Atlanta for me was a special. Uh, in all things, like mm -hmm. because I was very comfortable there. I had mm -hmm. my first daughter there, mm -hmm. so I bought my first house there. Like it was special in in in, in every point, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I I will be grateful for forever. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you were coached under Tata Martino at Atlanta, a huge success there when he came. Um, what kind of impact can he have on this Mexican national team? And what will he bring that's different to maybe make them even more successful? Yeah, I, I learned a lot with Tata. Uh, he's like a professor. He's, yeah. 
he's a master of the of the coach for me. Like he's very clear. He's very uh, how I say when, when he's quiet, but mm -hmm. he always give you the right word in the right moment, and you don't need more like that. And I think the the Mexico team and the the national team could be make a good, good things under him. Yeah. Speaking, I know you're out of football right now, but would you like to take part in our toilet paper challenge? Our leaderboard right now is 36. Do you think you can beat that? Well, I'll try. How many? Yeah. 28. What did you get? 38? No, 28. How does fan culture in Mexico and the US compare to Argentina? I know obviously you played in a super classico, so um, can, can you compare them or is there even a comparison? So I can I can compare it with the with the fans like they went to the they go to the game every game. So they mm -hmm. go to the field, they go to the stadium to support our, our team. Doesn't matter if we won, we lose, or, or depend on tie. So I, I can compare with that. But the difference in Argentina is like the passion. So mm. it, it's another passion. And for me, it's a wrong passion. Like mm. They they are more, they, they broke the line, you know, sometimes. And, and this is not good. But this is this these things make difference to the other country. So mm -hmm. The people and the fans in Argentina are super crazy, are, mm -hmm. are terrible in sometimes, and I, I I can't compare with with other countries. I can't tell you nothing about the super classical because it's an experience, it's an incredible experience, it's indescribable. Mm -hmm. So it's so I am talking about that. <laughs> You're like goosebumps. Yeah, exactly. So, so you're saying I need to go and experience it myself exactly, and all the fans watching. Exactly. And if the people want to think, want to feel something like that, they have to go to the Super Classico. They have to fly to Argentina and they have, they they need to go to to live one Super Classico. Because okay, done. I, I never felt something like that. All right, now I want to go into the Instagram dive. I literally went all over your Instagram to pick out what I really wanted to ask you about and try okay. not to embarrass you. Now, this first one is you golfing, okay? Yeah. You're teeing off, and I know you're a big fan of golf. I knew this in <laughs> Atlanta. Your swing and your form is incredible. If you could golf with any two footballers in the world, who would they be and why? If I have to choose the players, uh... Of course, I choose Messi. Yeah. Uh, of course, I, I choose Sergio Ramos either because in my position is my reference yeah. and I, I love how he plays and I love how his personality, his confidence, like he plays. Uh, it, it, You're very it will, similar. It, it will be very interesting to talk with him. Yeah. A lot, and this is why I, I choose him for the, for the goals because we are four hours together. <laughs> like, we talk a lot. All right, this next picture that I'm <laughs> going to show you here is um, a post that you put up, and it yeah. was your farewell post to Atlanta United fans, teammates, and the organization. When you look at this, what comes through your mind? What does that mean to you? Yeah, I, I felt so sad, mm -hmm. and, and and I think in the in the past. For the titles and, and the, the, the great moments we had, and I, I was in that moment. I was like destroyed because mm -hmm. I don't know if I find a place like a trans again. Mm -hmm. You know, because when you start a new a new challenge, you don't know how how you be. Mm -hmm. so, and this is why I, I felt like that, and I and I want to put that in my Instagram. And, I want to say thank you for everything because they make me feel so good there, mm -hmm. so important and, and so lovely. And this is why I, I, I say thank you. 
So this last photo is a photo that you posted and it's just Lionel Messi. And you quoted, thank you God for making it ours. Argentina, you are unique. For me, he's the best player of the history. Uh, I, I, did, I didn't have the possibility to, to watch Maradona and Pelé or another player you, you think he was the best. I had the possibility to meet him uh, because I was playing in under 20. In that was my second question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we had the possibility to to went to the World Cup in South Africa and make the sparring of them. Uh, uh, I play against him and I have the possibility to talk with him and he's amazing. He's a great guy and, and I post that picture because in Argentina, the people is crazy. The fans mm -hmm. are crazy. Nice. I feel the necessity to, to post mm -hmm. that picture to to support him. I don't mm -hmm. know if he doesn't need it to me, but <laughs> uh, I, I feel like that because uh, he's Argentine and and, mm -hmm. and we don't take a value of we have to take about him mm -hmm. because we don't know if we will see another player like him. Leandro, this is exactly why I wanted you on the show. Your passion on the pitch, your passion off the pitch is second to none. So I wish you the best of luck in your upcoming season in Mexico, in Tijuana with the Cholos. Um, and thank you again for joining us. I know you didn't have to and you, you have a family and you could be doing many other things, but it's honestly such a pleasure catching up with someone like yourself that's been so successful. Well, thank you, Kelly. Thank you. It was a pleasure for me either. And of course, I... I love you guys, you and Harry. And <laughs> I, I am always paying attention on your lights. And yeah. I I hope in, in the future see you again because you yes. are good people and great persons. And, and well, thank you for, for this note. Of course, anytime.